So a few days ago, I came up with my own cellular automaton as a sort of a twist on Predator and Prey. And I call it Empire. So how does it work? Well, let's get into the rules. As always, the world is made out of a grid of cells. Each one of these cells represents one person. And each one of these people holds some data. Their age, their strength, their reproduction value, I'll get to that in a second. And lastly, a couple of booleans, like whether they're alive or dead or not, or whether they're diseased or healthy. Each person belongs to a different colony, where the different colonies can be told apart by the different cell colours. In each step of the simulation, each person will try to move through a random spot around them. If they try to move onto water, then they will just stay put. If they try to move onto grass, then they will move there successfully. And lastly, if they try to move onto a spot where someone from a different colony is already standing, then the two people will fight, and the one with the highest strength value will win. And the other person will die. Also in each step of the simulation, the age and reproduction value of each person will increase. If the age of the person is higher than their strength, then the person will die due to old age. When their reproduction value reaches a certain threshold, they will give birth, and then their reproduction value resets back to zero. When this new person is born, they will inherit some values from their parents, whether the parent is diseased or not, and the parent's strength value. However, there is also a slight chance of mutation, so a newborn baby might get their strength value slightly increased or slightly decreased from the parent's value, and they may also contact a disease, which is how the disease actually enters the simulation. And given a person's already diseased, then the disease has a 50% chance of spreading when people try to move onto a square with someone from the same colony. At the start of the simulation, small colonies are placed in random spots around the world. And the idea is that you will eventually be left with just massive colonies, aka empires. So without any further ado, let's get into this. To start off, I simply wanted to get a blue and green map of the earth, where green is land and blue is a sea. So what I did, I googled blank world map and I coloured it in using paint.net. The colours are actually very important as I'll be reading the pixel colours at certain locations in the image to determine if a person can actually be there or not. And I feel the picture actually turned out pretty nicely. So anyways, into the code. As always, the first step is to get something drawing, and seeing as nothing new was really going on here, I just copy and pasted the rendering code from the Predator and Prey simulation to save time. So yeah, nothing too exciting for now. So the next thing I want to do is to get the world map drawing onto the window, and this was as simple as using an SFML rectangle and then just, you know, rendering it onto the window. And again, nothing too exciting happening so far. But now that all my visuals are ready, it was time to actually begin implementing my simulation. So to begin, I created the class called Person, which simply holds the data mentioned at the start of the video for each person. I then created an array structure to hold all these people, where one person is equal to one pixel on the window. The next thing to do was to create colonies and scatter them around the world. At this point, the different colonies were stored as a colour in an array of size 10. Each person also holds an integer for their colony ID, which actually refers back to the index of the colony array. This will make it easy to set the pixel colours, as I can just loop through all the people and set the pixel colour by looking up the colour in the colony array using the person's colony ID. For example, let's say we're looping through the people of the world using a nested loop as seen in the top right of this picture. We have reached the point where x equals 10 and y is equal to 500. So we get the colony ID of the person at 10 500, and let's just say his colony ID is 2. And so we set the pixel colour at 10 500 to be pink, because as you can see by the colony around the left there, the colony at index 2 is pink. So now that people and colonies were set up, it was now possible to place some people around the world. To do this, a random location or land is chosen for each colony to originate from. And then 50 people are placed for each colony in an area around the respective origin point. The very small colonies of people can be seen here. Uh, to help you see them, I'm circling them with my mouse, seeing as they're, well, they're barely visible right now. And now it was time to implement the base rules, people moving over land, people reproducing, and people dying of old age. Furthermore, the basic strength altering mutations were implemented for when the people reproduced. There were two mutation types, a small mutation and a large mutation, where the small mutation is more common than the large one. The small mutation altered a child's strength value by plus minus 2%, while the large one changed it by plus minus 20%. Disease and fighting was not implemented just yet. Anyways, as you can see, it works exactly as we expect it to. The people are moving around, it looks really cool, and 
they're dying straight away. Oh. So obviously something wasn't right here. It was quite likely to be the mutation, so as a test I commented that out so every child was as strong as their parent. And well, the result is quite possibly one of the coolest things I have ever seen. But anyways, regardless of how cool it looks, it was clear the mutations were to blame. And so I adjusted the mutation alteration value so there was a bias towards making a child stronger rather than equal chance of making a child stronger or weaker. As well as doing this, I also made it so the colours of the different colony types were more contrasting so you could tell them apart more easily. As you can see, the people are not dying right away anymore, which is good, and their colours are a bit better. The next thing to do was very important, the fights between the colonies. This was really as simple as a couple of if statements checking the colony types and the strength value between the people. And here is how it looks, I just hope YouTube compression doesn't ruin this clip as this part actually looks quite cool. Anyways, here is how it looks about 30 or so minutes later and I noticed something rather interesting. On the bottom left you can see the different colony statistics, how many people are in each colony and the average strength value of each one. Take a look at colony 6, which is the people isolated in Australia. Now compared to other colonies, their strength value is extremely low. In contrast, look at colony 10 of whom are scattered in war around Asia and Eastern Europe. These people have a very 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 high strength value. And this is interesting because it means this simulation has sort of turned into a real life evolution simulator. Where the very strongest of each colony is surviving, leaving the average strength values for those in war extremely high. Meanwhile the solitude colonies such as 2 in the American continent and colony 6 in Australia have very low strength values. And this is because they didn't need high strength to survive seeing as there are no threats and so they didn't evolve to have those traits. So yeah that's kind of interesting I guess. But anyways I was interested to see how it looks with Europe so here's what Europe looks like. And I was also curious to see how it would look with just various random shapes. Unfortunately, I noticed a huge mistake in my code. When people tried to move to places where someone of the same colony was already standing, they would move there anyway, effectively meaning loads of people were just dying. And when I fixed this, overpopulation clearly became a massive problem. And so I think it was about time to finally implement disease. As I said earlier in the video, disease is sometimes created when a child is born due to mutations. Something that I did not mention was the effect of disease. So what disease does is it effectively halves the strength value of the infected people, causing them to die of old age a lot faster. And well, hopefully this would solve the overpopulation problem. And here's how it looks, and as you can see it worked perfectly, but unfortunately, well actually not perfectly, it worked a little too well. As you can see in Eastern Europe and Asia, it's looking very patchy with different colonies intertwined with each other, which just doesn't look right. As a way to combat this, I tried to change how disease works a little bit. Rather than making them lose their strength, I made it so they instead aged a bit faster. And here is the final result, and I can proudly say it's working exactly as I'd hoped it would. Looks like Colony 5 is doing a pretty good job of taking over America, and I can say Colony 8 is doing a pretty good job of taking over Asia, Europe and Africa. And that's another thing that's interesting, if you look at the strength value of Colony 5 now, it's gone down dramatically because there's no threat anymore. So yeah, I think the simulation ended up being pretty interesting. So that's it I guess, and I want to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Thank you SnappySoap318, thank you Stanley Morris, thank you Synthetic aka Hayden, thank you Timothy Gibbons, and thank you Alchemic. So anyways, there is actually quite a lot more that could be done here. For example, if a person has very high strength, then they could have the ability to swim across oceans, or maybe add it so there's multiple more deadly disease types. So yeah, I might make a part 2 of this eventually if you want me to. Anyways, once again, thank you for watching, and goodbye!